Hey everyone, this video is going to be an extremely basic introduction to recursion and some of the ways that you might be able to use it in generative art. The idea behind recursion is simply a function that calls itself. In this example that you can see, the function that I made is just one that draws a line between two points. The end point of one line becomes the starting point for the two lines that branch off of that point. In addition, to the starting points as information that we're providing to the function, we're also giving it the angle at which it should branch off into these new lines. It's going to make a lot more sense when you see it in a minute, but it's really exciting because it only takes a few lines of code. I'm going to start just by defining a function that's capable of drawing a line from one point to the next point. In order to do that, I'll introduce you to the concept of p vectors in Python processing. They make it really easy to handle directions, so x and y direction, and then we're going to be able to rotate that vector really easily, but again, I'll show you how to do that. So def, we'll just call it draw line. We're going to give it a start point, a start vector, we'll just call that v. We're going to give it a length of the line that we're going to draw, and that's all I'm going to give it for now. We're going to add one more parameter in a few minutes, but I'll explain that when we get there. So if you understand how a vector works, I'll just do a quick little example here. If we have a vector that's 1 and 0, the idea behind this direction is that we're pointed in the x direction. We're not going anywhere in the y, we're just going in the x. If I reverse these, then we would have a, a y direction. We're going to use this vector, the x and the y directions, to determine where our endpoint is for this line. So start point is equal to the point that we passed in. End point is equal to, we're, we're creating these points now. So, so this is the x value of the end point. It's going to be the starting x value plus the x direction of our vector multiplied by the length of whatever we want. That length is, that's going to change and be arbitrary. You'll decide that. But we're going to do the exact same thing for the y value. Just make sure you're grabbing the y values of the starting point and the direction. So that's our start point. That's our end point. Then we can just do line start point. I can't remember if I have to do. I don't remember if that. I think that I have to do this, which is kind of annoying, but let's just do it. Not so bad. So if we call the draw line function, we need to pass in a start point, and we'll just say 500, 500 for now. Actually, oops. Now we're gonna say, let's make this a little cleaner. Width divided by two, height divided by two. So we're just gonna go in the dead center for right now to draw this line. For the vector, we're gonna call this thing called p vector. I'm gonna give it an x direction, but not a y direction. And then for length, we'll just do 100 for now. So here's our center. Let me bump this weight up a little bit so you can see it. So there's the center starting point. Here's the end point. I'm actually going to do one more quick thing on the draw line function just, just so we can see it for now. I'm actually going to draw a circle at the end point so that I can show you how we're going to start rotating. So now I've got this little circle at the end point. When we start drawing the lines for our recursive tree, whatever you want to call the thing that I showed you at the beginning, we need to be able to rotate the two branches that come off the previous line. We're going to use literally a rotate function on the p vector. That's the main reason we're using these p vectors is because it makes it really easy to rotate. So if I take this out, I just want to demonstrate how the rotation works. I say v equals p vector, and we call p here, or v. It works the same way. Now we can call v.rotate, and we'll say, we'll start with pi. So it flips it, right? It rotates all the way around. 
if we do 0.5 times pi, it's just going to come straight down. We're just rotating the direction of the vector or the vector. That's really the building blocks of what you need to go ahead and get a recursive function working. So we're going to take out this circle. We don't need that anymore. We understand how rotation works. When we pass in our original vector, which can be whatever you want it to be, I'm actually going to start with 0, 0, 0.0, and then we're going to do a negative y direction, because we're going to start at the bottom of the image and we're going to come up. Let me see. So we want to start in the middle, but we want to start at the very bottom, so we're going to change this to height. We're passing in that original vector. For the length, this can kind of change. I think we're just going to start off with height divided by 2. So let's see what that looks like real quick. So we're starting in the center, we're coming up to the middle. You'll see how we adjust the length in a second. We've already drawn the line, right? This function works, it draws the line, it does what it's supposed to do. Now we just want to call itself twice to draw the branching lines. Draw line. We've already determined the endpoint of the previous line, which is what we want to use for the start point of each of our branches. So endpoint, I'm just going to say V for now, but that's incorrect. We're going to rotate it before we pass it in. For length, this is where I would probably define a maybe like a length uh, deprecation value. So length equals, let's say, 0.8. So whenever we call draw line from within itself, we'll just multiply the length by a value like that. So length uh, dep. Dep. I don't, I don't know. And then we're just going to call draw line again in a second. Now I can call this, but it's not going to work because we've hit this maximum recursion depth, right? Maximum recursion depth exceeded. I actually didn't test that before I filmed it, so I'm glad that worked out exactly like I expected it to. We can't call this function infinitely. That doesn't work. So we need another parameter that I mentioned a little bit earlier, and that's the depth. When we start off, we're going to say we're at a depth of 1, or I guess you could say you're at a depth of 0. Maybe that's a little bit better. This value is a, something we need to check every time we call draw line to make sure we're not past the depth that we've specified. So if d is greater than max depth, return. And then we would just define max depth up here as, let's start with 2, just so we can kind of test it out. This return is kind of at the bottom of the recursion. If you imagine a recursive function calling itself and then that, call calls itself on and on and on down the rabbit hole we go somewhere along the line you have to come back up out of the recursive functions so there's this long chain all the way down and then these return values kind of bring you back up i guess so if i call it now still not working draw line endpoint what did i do oh i didn't pass in the dip so when we call draw line Within itself, we just have to increment or make sure that we increment the depth. We're taking our current depth and we're saying we're going one further. D plus one is all we have to do there. Okay, so we're drawing the lines. This is recursion. It's working, but we're not rotating. You can actually kind of see. It's a little hard to see, but this is thicker because we're just drawing two lines there. So before we draw the line, we just have to make sure. I think I need to set these to new uh, vectors. So I'm going to say v equals, maybe I can do this, let's see, v equals v dot copy, v dot rotate, we'll say 0.5 times pi, v equals v dot, well that's not going to work. Okay, so let's call, um, let's say v1, v1 equals v dot copy, v1 dot rotate, and then we'll say v2 copy. There's probably a better way to do this than copying it twice and then rotating both, but I think this is simple and it, it's very straightforward and hopefully this is helpful. 1.5 times pi. You can play around with these values too and just understand more about how it rotates, but I just want to get through this. It did not work. Oh, psh, I didn't pass in the, the new ones, the new vectors. So v1, v2. Okay. 
So that's it, right? That's the first example of real recursion. We're just going to a depth of two. So this is depth zero for this line. These lines right here are depth one, and these lines are depth two. And then it terminates, it starts returning, it comes back up out of the hole. Let's go a little bit deeper, but in order to see it, you can already see how we're kind of filling out the screen here. We need to drop this value down so that we make sure we're kind of branching out a little bit. So now I'm going to raise the max depth up to four. And it, you can see it just continues and the lines keep getting shorter. If we increase it up to eight, it's going to be hard to see just because the line width. But that's it, right? Let's, let's actually recreate the image that I showed you at the beginning. I think I had a size of 1000, 1000. I think this was like 0.6, 12. Let's drop the stroke weight down to one. Uh, start off there. If I hit play. Yeah, I think that looks awesome. And it's just so incredibly simple. It's so accessible. Hopefully this has been helpful. It's been a really basic introduction, but I think that's really all you need to get started with recursion. Once you understand the principles of, okay, here's something that calls itself, but we have to make sure we give it something new every time. And we have to make sure that we've set limitations on how far the recursion can go. The possibilities are endless. You can do whatever you want. It's so exciting. The last thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to introduce a little bit of randomness. Let's say random point, 4.6 on this and then random 1.4 1.6 I think that'll work you can see it's not much because we're not really working with much but you can see a little bit of the randomness at play we don't have to have this very rigid structure for our recursion we can just kind of play with the values and cool stuff starts happening so what if I said point random point two Hopefully this has been helpful. It's been a lot of fun to work on just because this is super simple, super powerful. Uh, if you're interested in stuff like this, I have a few other generative tutorials, generative art tutorials that I would encourage you to check out. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in another video.